Welcome to It's Your Case, presented by VetCity.com. I'm Virginie Barbaret, your radiologist on demand for this week. Today's example is a 10-year-old female entire Maltese dog, presented with lethargy, weight loss, and a mass was palpated in the abdomen during the clinical examination. Once you have reviewed the radiographs using your systematic approach, then you're ready to watch this video. Now, I will highlight the most significant findings on those abdominal radiographs. So, the most striking thing on those radiographs is the displacement of the gastric axis. Normally, when we trace the gastric axis between the fundus region of the, uh, of the stomach and the pyloric antrum, this gastric axis should be roughly um, parallel to the ribs or perpendicular to the spine in more deep-chested dog. So in a normal dog of that conformation, we would expect the gastric axis to be something like this. You can see that in this dog, when we trace the gastric axis between the fundus area and the pyloric antrum, which is this fluid fit part on the right lateral projection, we see that this, this quite far displaced caudally and dorsally from what we would expect normally. So a displacement of this gastric axis caudodorsally. When we see this finding, that indicates a mass effect coming from the craniovantral abdomen. On the ventral dorsal projection, we can see that the stomach is also displaced, um, but in that case, it is displaced mostly to the left, indicating that the mass effect is probably coming from this right cranial abdomen. Here we see the stomach here on the left and on the midline, when normally on a normal dog, it should, you should see the fundus here, the body somewhere in the midline, and then the pyloric room at that level. So this displacement of stomach to the left indicates a mass effect coming from the right cranial abdomen. There is another finding in that um, radiograph is that there is also a soft tissue opacity mass lesion here in the mid to uh, in the cranial to mid ventral abdomen um, and we do not see really well the margins the normal margins of the liver normally the liver appears like a soft tissue triangular well-defined soft tissue opacity at that level and here we don't really see what is liver uh, and uh, differentiate it from this mass lesion there so, considering the differential diagnosis for those lesions, the most common thing that can create a cranial dorsal displacement of the stomach like this is usually an enlargement from the liver, so either a diffuse hepatomegaly or a mass lesion coming from the liver. Less commonly, it could be a mass coming from the gastric wall itself, a gast an eccentric gastric mass like a leiomyosarcoma or leiomyoma, for example, but that's less common than an hepatic mass. Here, we would think more of an hepatic mass rather than a diffuse hepatomegaly because we do not see really well the margins of the liver when we think of an hepatomegaly secondary to a steroid hepatopathy, for example, we see we usually delineate really well the margins of the liver, which is not the case here. So a mass coming from the liver is the most likely differential diagnosis for this mass lesion here. Regarding this mass lesion there, we have two main differential diagnoses. Either it can be a part of the mass liver, which is quite lobulated and displacing, uh, and displaced caudally, or it could be a separate mass, which is partially silhouetting with the liver because they are in close contact. And in that case, we would consider most likely a splenic mass lesion um, it's quite common to see splenic mass lesion uh, at that level um, in the abdomen. So regarding the differential diagnosis, considering that it's a 10-year-old dog with presenting with weight loss, um, the most likely differential diagnosis would be neoplasia. And um, if the mass lesion involves only the liver, then we will consider probably a primary hepatic carcinoma. If the liver and the spleen would be involved, then we could also consider round cell neoplasia, such as lymphoma, hysterostic sarcoma, 
um, or eventually some emangio sarcoma that could affect uh, both organs. So the further tests to consider in those cases would be to do the abdominal ultrasound and eventually do some sampling uh, with under ultrasound guidance, so FNAs or biopsies of the mass lesions. Obviously, if your blood tests um, are, um, do not indicate um, a coagulopathy, for example, that would be a contraindication to do some sampling of those mass. An additional finding uh, in this radiograph is that the fact that we see uh, slightly the, the uterus, which is not uh, always the case, uh, not often the case. So when we see it, it could indicate a mild enlargement. That could still be a physiological enlargement because it's quite mild, like a recent oestrus. But we could consider also an early pyometra or mucometra, for example. You can see the stomach is quite filled with motile content, most likely food. Uh, but there is also a bit of mineralized content here, which could represent a small piece of bone uh, or a small foreign body. So that's it for today. Be sure to review the full report associated with this case. Thanks for listening. And remember, it's your case. So please post your questions on social media. Thank you. Bye.